the life we have on Earth must have spontaneously generated itself. Scientists have reason to think that the first living cells on Earth came about through a natural process called chemical evolution. Has science shown this? We tracked down James Tour, one of the world's leading experts in synthetic organic chemistry, to find out. All of these little pictures of molecules coming together to form the first cell are fallacious, are ridiculous. The origin of life community has not been honest. They will write in their very papers, they will see some small phenomena and extrapolate what this means in the context of origin of life. And then they will work with the press and the press will extrapolate it all the more. And you get many, many people deceived, thinking that life has been all but made. All of this is all a lie. This is a lie. Science, scientist Craig Venter creates life for the first time in a laboratory. We're here today to announce uh, the first uh, synthetic cell. We haven't, we haven't, haven't created life nowhere close. What they did is they took a cell they took the genome out of that cell, they manufactured a genome that's similar to it, and they put it in. That is akin to taking an engine out of a Ford and putting it in to a Buick, and then saying, look, I created automobiles. No, you just took one piece, and it's not even the engine, it's just the computer control box you took out of one car and you put it in another car. That's what it was like. But the design of the computer control box you got from other cells. Other scientists say they've been able to create protocells in the lab that are the stepping stones to the first life. I can mix some chemicals together in a test tube in my lab, and these, these chemicals will start to self-associate to form larger and larger structures. The protocell moves as a metabolism. It could use energy and it moves around. Protocells are a bunch of nonsense. That is like a proto-turkey. I take 20 pounds of sliced turkey meat from a delicatessen. I throw that into a pot. I add some turkey broth. I warm that up and I throw in some feathers and I say, that's a proto-turkey. Yeah, there's no order to it, but you know, if you wait long enough, a turkey will come gobbling out. That sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? That's precisely what origin of life researchers have done when they make a proto-cell. Wait a second. Haven't we been taught with hundreds of millions of years, anything is possible? Time is actually the enemy. You let these chemicals that have been made sit around. They show the degradation in a period of weeks. Weeks is the twinkling of an eye when it comes to prebiotic time scales. The chemicals decompose. So to think that the molecules could be made and sit there waiting for other molecules to come in, it doesn't happen. Organic chemistry doesn't work that way. Well, if life didn't spontaneously generate on Earth, what about scientists who believe that life must have come here from outer space? Whether you want to have it originate from Earth or from some other planet, you have to have the origin of life. You have to have the origin of that first cell. How does that happen? We have no idea. So with all the advances in scientific research and the study of life, why can't we figure this out? With all of origin of life research going on, the problem is becoming harder all the time, not easier. And the reason it's become harder is because we understand more about the complexity of a cell. To help explain the complexity of living cells, we turn to molecular biologist Douglas Axe. To get an idea of the complexity of a living cell, think of a factory with thousands of pieces of machinery all working together to do some coordinated task. A cell is actually far more complicated than that factory because factories don't maintain themselves. People have to maintain factories. And factories certainly don't make new factories. Whereas with a living cell, all the parts that wear out are automatically remanufactured within the cell. Not only that, the cell is manufacturing a new cell as well. Human-made factories don't even come close. For a living cell to exist and perform such complex tasks, it takes some very detailed instructions, which are chemically encoded in our DNA. If you have a string of nucleic acids like DNA or RNA has, you have to have a precise sequence because that translates to what proteins are needed to build the organism. 
That's called the information code. But where did all that information, these detailed instructions, come from to build the first cell? We don't have a tool to assess that within chemistry. Laboratory chemistry may not, but Stephen Meyer is convinced origin science does have the tools. Is there anything we know of that does have the causal power, the ability to generate new information, and therefore could explain the origin of the first cell? And I think there is, and that's the, the idea of intelligent design. Intelligent design is defined as the theory that certain features of the natural world are best explained by an intelligent cause, not an undirected process. Because what we know from our experience is that intelligent agents can produce information and indeed do produce information in a digital or typographic form, the form of information that we find in the DNA molecule, functional digital information. Whenever we see information and we trace it back to its source, whether we find it in a section of software code or a paragraph in a book or in a hieroglyphic inscription, we always find that a mind played a role in generating that information. Don't be fooled by the hype. Materialists are further from explaining the origin of life than ever before, yet they still refuse to consider the only observable source known to create information code, an intelligent designing mind.